Hey everyone, Kunik here, back with another RPG horror story for you today. And this is actually part two to a story I'm collaborating with Artificial DM on. So if you haven't seen part one yet, pause the video and head over to his channel first to check it out. With that all said, let's roll for initiative and begin part two of Lazy Furry DM Spoils Icewind Dale. Let me tell you what happened during my second and last session with this particular group. So I spend the rest of the following week reflecting on my experience with this group. I've been a regular of this subreddit for a while, but I was truly mystified a group this dysfunctional could possibly exist in reality. The DM is not only egotistical, with his Fursona DMPC bossing everyone around, but is so lazy he can hardly be bothered to run encounters and play NPCs that aren't his avatar. I try to rationalize it away, as the typical awkwardness and slowness of the first few levels, while the party is squishy and trying to get to know each other. I tell myself that next session will be better, because the party will be spending it in town. That should give me a chance to roleplay my character and get to know everyone a little better. In short, that doesn't happen, and I end up getting so frustrated that I get up and leave two hours into the session. I'd already learned how much of a lazy, disorganized jerk our DM was, but I didn't truly really recognize the depths of his disinterest in running his own game. This session can best be described as a slow-moving train wreck of venom, disorganization, and boredom that ultimately became too much to bear. So, let's get to the beginning of the session. So, we're currently traveling back to town on the back of our Tabaxi's Ranger's Pet Bison. Diem decides it's time for a random encounter. Suddenly, the ground starts rumbling beneath her feet. A massive monster comes over the horizon and stomps past our tiny group. It's the Tarask! Everyone freaks out for a little bit, but the Diem tells us we're beneath its notice and it passes us by. He tells us, both in and out of character, that he's going to lead us back to kill that thing when we're level 20. My level 3 warlock jokes, if someone told him that they were going to fight something that big, he'd tell them good luck and sit in the tavern, which got a few chuckles from the rest of the group. Diem audibly scoffs at me and calls me a coward. Now, maybe it was him trying to be in character, since his DMPC avatar, Marty Stu Wear Polar Bear, is supposed to be this wise, valorous leader. But the raw contempt in his voice and what he ends up doing later makes me strongly suspect he was serious. I'm caught off guard and more than a little irritated, and consider it strike one. We get to the next town and get stopped by the gate guards. Apparently, there's a serial killer going around that's a werebear like our party lead, and they're hesitant to let him through the gates. More guards come out and surround him, and his DMPC goes into some melodramatic speech about how he will not resist these noble guards, who are only doing their duty. But, please don't arrest his beloved friends. I should point out that the DM has a very flat, droning voice. When he tried to speak in his DMPC's voice, I think he was trying to sound all lofty and wise, with this weird airy lift to his tone. All it managed to do was make him sound like he was a fat man out of breath, panting every word. Not interested in hearing this speech, the party scatters. Some of us just bolt away, while one genius gets the idea in his head to somehow climb over the wall and jump into the village using his furry powers. He fails and takes massive fall damage, falling over the wall. Diem sighs and utters a line that will be burned into my mind forever. Well, out of character, I'll let you know. He goes on to explain that this isn't how he wanted this encounter to go. He just wanted to add some flavor while totally hogging the spotlight, and hype up an encounter with this were polar bear he plans on hitting us with later. In contrast with their suspicion of just a few seconds ago, the guards suddenly lower their spears, and I quote, straight from the fat man's mouth, Ugh, we're just guard dudes. If you say you won't cause trouble, it's not our business what you're doing here. So they open the gate, and Dean declares we all head to the tavern. No explanations, no roleplay, no player agency. The guards just let us through, and we magically appear in the tavern with the DMPC. How immersive. Does the guy that tried to skip the cutscene and jump the gate get his missing health back? No, of course not. He shouldn't have tried that. Moving on. So, 
We get the bounty for killing the Yetis, and it's at this point he pulls Strike 2. The Tabaxi Ranger gets her share of the reward, and starts celebrating. I've mentioned the Tabaxi before, because she's really the only member of the group that stood out as memorable. We barely interacted, but she was probably the only person in the group I'd care to play with again. In contrast to the edgelords and generic guys we were playing with, she liked to crack jokes and brighten up the mood by not really taking things seriously. What little I could glean of her backstory was that she was some sort of nomad that lived out in the tundra alone, and so got really excited and cheerful when she got to interact with people. When she gets her share of the pay, she describes how her character does this little happy dance and crawls up on our werebear leader's shoulder to give him a hug. Well, out of character, I'll let you know. DM pauses things to tell her to not try that with him again, that he works a long job before taking the time to come and DM this game, and how he's got all sorts of issues with physical contact, and why it's unnecessary. I've been through too much crap to deal with stuff like that. Trying that with me in real life would result in a lot of trouble for you. The only time an edgelord sounds cringier than he already is, is when he's a furry and tries to growl like a bear after saying it and only manages to sound like a drunk Chewbacca choking to death. Nonetheless, the Tabaxi apologizes and gets really quiet the rest of the time I'm there. We move on. The mood thoroughly killed. DM declares it's time for the party to handle any business we have in town. I'm surprised that the DM doesn't do downtime activities like Xanthar's explains. Rather than have us just say what we're doing and do it off screen, or roll a few dice, he has everyone do effectively a one-on-one -on -one RP with him for whatever shopping trip or activity we want to do, which results in everyone else standing around being bored. And every time everyone does something that would actually require some roleplay, he sighs and chimes in. Well, out of character, I'll let you know. Every single time. Don't get attached to this NPC. The book says I'm supposed to be helpful while playing him, but he's a spy for a cult. No point asking that kid questions about the murders. The book says he doesn't know anything. That's right. This bad DM is somehow simultaneously dedicated to being as lazy as possible in his storytelling and committed to maximum realism at the same time. On the druid's turn, before they could declare what they were going to do, the DM declares that the druid's pocket was picked. The druid declares he's going to track down the thief. Cue 15 minutes of asking around where the thief's hideout is. Before going into the thief hideout and finding five thieves standing around counting out the stolen coin purse. Druid loudly demands his money back. DM starts sniggering. DM asks why the druid went to get the coin purse when it was the paladin who was pickpocketed. Everyone was confused. No, that's not what you said. You clearly said it was the druid. Everyone backs the druid up on this, saying the DM must have misspoken. Can he just change it so it was the druid that was robbed, or just have the paladin be there instead? He ignores everyone and starts laughing, like he's pulled the funniest prank in the world on the druid, loudly wondering why he chose to waste his turn on a side quest that wasn't even his. You... You're the only one who literally told him to do it. You chose not to correct him at any point. You were making him RP this investigation. You're the one at fault for this, you fat gaslighting duck. But it's okay, because he forgives the druid for his mistake and has the thieves give the coin purse back without a fight. Going to the next player's turn. Eventually, we get to my turn. If you read my previous post, I mentioned that I'm playing a warlock in Icewind Dale to do a service for my patron. I'm waiting for my patron to reach out to give me instructions on what quest I'm supposed to do for him. This is the backstory the DM agreed to give me, on the understanding he'd be expected to give me a hook at some point to go along with what the party is doing. Okay, Warlock, what do you do? What? What's your character's motivation? He came to Icewind Dale for something, right? Awkward silence. Did he seriously forget my character's backstory? Or does he seriously expect me to RP me interacting with my own patron? I ask him what he means, and he and other members of the party get more and more annoyed I don't embark on a massive mini-quest, doing mundane chores in my room at the inn, or opening a business. Apparently, and I kid you not, 
The tabaxi took up a ton of time in the session before the one I joined, opening and operating a fishery business, and is expected to check back in when we head back to the town to see how it is running. Look, are you going to do something, or what? I finally come up with something after a minute. Uh, I'd like to go to the bounty office. I figured I'd check to see if my family had a bounty on my head due to some backstory stuff, or at least kill some minor enemy and get some money to spend since I lost all of mine in the first 15 minutes of last session. The fighter chimes in. I would like to go with him. Sure, might as well get this downtime session done quickly so we can actually go in an adventure together and interact. Okay, fighter, your backstory secret is that a group of bandits killed your family, right? Out of character, I'll let you know. I'm probably going to have the next group of bandits we fight be those bandits, so I can get it out of the way. The fighter goes quiet. They hadn't gone into any detail at all about their character. That's right. The DM was just so lazy, he was just openly spoiling player backstories to get them out of the way. Anything to avoid having to work on DMing the story, right? And that was strike three. Something goes down at the bounty office, but I'm not paying attention anymore. Just seething at the DM's blatant disrespect to roleplaying and having wasted my time with this game. Someone else's turn comes up, and he wants to buy a particular item from a shop in town. Sure. Um, look, I don't really understand the part of the book about this shop. Can you guys just sort this thing out for me? And just starts uploading shaky phone camera shots of pages from the Icewind Dale book. At that point, I just left. Left the Discord, deleted the invite, and a moment later, the DM blocked me. It was honestly just a disaster, from start to end. It honestly felt like the DM wanted to god mode run Icewind Dale with his self insert, but couldn't find someone to DM for him. So he effectively wanted us to play as NPCs for him to interact with, and occasionally psychologically torture, outside of dungeons. Pachka the Wear Polar Bear, if you ever read this, please get stepped on by the Tarask. End post. Yeah, I think we can all agree on that we would never ever want to play with a DM like this. Emphasis on the ever. As far as I can tell, there is absolutely no redeeming factor to playing with this guy other than maybe getting an understanding for just how bad things could be and maybe putting into perspective previous sessions you may have had. But yeah, that's it for this story. If you liked it and you want to see more videos just like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button and bell notification icon to be notified of my future videos. And as always, the source of the video is in the description below, along with a link to Artificial DM's channel if you're not yet subscribed to him. Anyhow, while you wait for my future videos to come out, here are a few related videos that you can watch in the meantime.